Okay, lesson 128 of A Course in Miracles. Mm -hmm. uh, the world I see holds nothing I want. I just love this lesson. So. <laughs> 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 yeah. The world I see holds nothing I want. Oh, I did want to do a video on, on the, yeah, the coronavirus, but anyway, never mind. Um, well, uh, no, I can't link it to this. Uh, the world I see holds nothing I want. <laughs> the world you see holds, isn't this beautiful? The world you see holds nothing that mm. you need that, that, it, that you need to offer you. Mm -hmm. Nothing that you can use in any way, nor anything at all that serves to give you joy. Isn't that freeing? Like, so if it brings up everything you're chasing, everything that you give meaning, there's nothing in this world that you want. So, um, believe this thought and you are saved from years of misery, from countless disappointments, and from hopes that turn to bitter ashes of despair. There's nothing much to add. I mean, it's so brilliant, really. N uh, no one but must accept this thought as true if he would leave the world behind and soar beyond its petty scope and little ways. Each thing you value here is but a chain that binds you to the world. Ooh, mm. Interesting, isn't that? Yeah. So every, everything that you value is a chain that binds you to the world. And it will serve no other end but this. For everything must serve the purpose you have given it, until you see a different purpose there. The only purpose worthy of your mind uh, this world contains is that you pass it by without delaying to perceive some hope where there is none. Be you deceived no more. The world you see holds nothing that you want. Escape today the chains you place upon your mind. Uh, when you perceive salvation here, for, for what you value, you make a part of you as you perceive yourself. All things you seek to make your, uh, your, to, all things you seek to make your value greater in your sight limit you further. Hide your worth from you and add another bar across the door that leads to, to true awareness of yourself. So every attachment is, you know, like if we talk about the observer or being totally free or in the non-dual or in the oneness. So everything that the ego values creates uh, an attachment or a suffering, which then creates, a, which, you know, can be a joy in the beginning, but can later turn to pain. So let nothing that relates to body thoughts delay your progress to salvation nor permit temptation to believe the world holds anything you want to hold you back. Nothing is here to cherish. Now, uh, nothing is here to cherish. Uh, I think that probably makes some spiritual seekers, seekers angry, won't it? But uh, nothing is here to cherish. Mm. And uh, what that's referring to is clearing the ego, ego perception. Because you know, the Course is not about you know, doom and gloom, but it is about clearing the ego out which is the block to love. And, and not only the block to love, but it is, I mean, this lesson is going against the blocks to personal love. So it would be non-dual love or oneness. Hmm. Nothing here is worth one instant of delay and pain, one moment of uncertainty and doubt. The worthless offer nothing. Certainty of worth cannot be found in worthlessness. Today we practice letting go all thought of values we have given to the world. We leave it free of purpose. We, we gave its aspects and its phrases and its dreams. So if you let go of all ego attachments and all ego perceptions and all ego belief systems, all your projections, those would be all the dreams, all the personal desires of the ego. Then uh, either one, you know, what, I mean, as we get to the level of enlightenment, it then becomes uh, uh, an aspect of divine will, whether one stays as an empty channel in the world, orchestrated by the divine, or, you know, some, and for some, you know, you could say luckily or unluckily, they get to move on. Uh, but there's no ego, no ego filtering uh, the, the channel. We hold its purpose, we hold, we hold it purposeless within our minds and loosen it from all we wish it were. Thus do we lift the chains that bar the door to freedom from the world and go beyond all little values and diminished goals. 
Pause and be still a little while and see how far you rise above the world when you release your mind from chains and let it seek the level where it finds itself at home. It will be grateful to be free a while. It knows where it belongs, but free its wings and it will fly in sureness and in joy to join its holy purpose. Let us rest in its creator, there to be restored to sanity, to freedom and to love. Give it 10 minutes rest three times a day. That sounds nice, doesn't it? And when your eyes are opened afterwards, you will not value anything you see as much as when you looked at it before. Your whole uh, perspective on the world will shift by just a little every time you let your mind escape its chains. It just reminded me of the observer. You know, when one goes into the observer, there's an effortless, uh, effortless grace to life. And if you know when you're in the observer or the attached observer, when you come back into filtering from your ego, life seems a bit more stressful. So the world is not where it belongs, and you belong where it would be, and where it goes to rest when you release it from the world. Your guide is sure. Open your mind to him. Be still and rest. Protect your mind throughout the day as well. And when you think you see some value, an aspect or an image of the world, refuse to lay this chain upon your mind, but tell yourself with quiet certainty that this will not tempt me to delay myself. The world I see holds nothing that I want. So that's a great lesson, I think, to read when you're suffering the world. It's kind of like uh, cut, cut, cutting the cords that the ego is holding.